As you might be already knowing, Android Automotive is not a fork or parallel development of Android. It is the same code base and it lives in the same repository as the Android on phones, tablets, and televisions. In this diagram, we can see how the automotive modules are developed in comparison to the Android architecture. On the left side, we have the Android modules and on the right side, we have the automotive specific modules. These modules are created specifically for automotive. Many of the automotive modules are an extension to the standard Android modules. For example, the system UI is extended from the mobile version of system UI. The automotive audio module is built on top of the core Android audio stack. As displayed in this diagram, at the top of the stack, there are the system apps, OEM apps and third-party apps. The app communicates with the services through the Android Framework API in case of standard Android. In the case of automotive apps, the car API is used to communicate with the car service. The car API communicates with the car service over the binder IPC. This is because car API and car service are in different processes. By default, Android does not allow one process to communicate directly with another process. Binder IPC is the inter-process communication mechanism used in Android. As we can see, the Android system services and the car service are on the same stack. The car service communicates with the Android system services for its functioning. The car service is started by the system server when the device boots up. The car service is responsible for talking with the vehicle hull over the binder IPC. The vehicle hull communicates with the automotive ECUs. That's not shown in this diagram, but we will look at it shortly. Now, let's look deeper into the right side of this diagram, the automotive stack. This diagram explains how the automotive modules are structured. On the top, we have the automotive apps, which communicate with the car library. Normally, we use the car manager classes to get hold of the services. The library communicates over binder using the AIDL interfaces with the car service. The car service communicates over binder IPC using HIDL or AIDL interfaces. HIDL is being replaced by the AIDL interface, so in the future, all the HIDL files will get replaced by AIDL. The vehicle hull talks with the vehicle ECUs over the CAN bus or any other vehicle bus. A vehicle bus is nothing but a specialized internal communications network that interconnects components inside a vehicle. Now, let's look at the responsibilities of each of these components in the automotive stack. Let's start from the bottom. Vehicle ECU talks with the CAN bus or vehicle bus. For example, to get the speed of the vehicle, it would talk with the responsible ECU. This data gets propagated to vehicle hull as vehicle properties. The vehicle hull stores information as vehicle properties which are extracted from the ECUs. Almost all the properties are linked to the signals which are received from the ECUs. Car service is a system service started by the system server during Android boot up. Car service can persist the state and provide APIs to the car library. It works as a mediator between vehicle hull and the car library. The car service is in fact a collection of services. If we look at the iCar implementation, we could find all these services. We will discuss in detail how it is started when we do the code walkthrough. Car library exposes the APIs to the automotive apps. Car library communicates with the car service over the binder IPC using the ADL interface. And finally, at the top we have the automotive apps. This could be system apps, OEM apps or even third-party apps. These apps utilize the APIs exposed by the car library.